to our November Lunch and Learn. I'm Lori Tro, and I am president of the Salina League of Women Voters. And I'm very happy that you are here. Our speaker today is Jane Anderson. She is the executive director of the Friends of the River Foundation. And she's going to give us an update today about what's happening with the project, because we're all excited. Yes. So, <laughs> I think when I was here last, the sales tax had just passed, so it's been a few years. And of course, people are like, so what in the world's going on or not going on? We do have good news for you, so let's just go through it. And you can stop any time if you have questions. And I brought more information if you're really like a detailed person. I do have more for Martha Tasker, so we're just going to go through what, what happened to this river and what is going to happen and why are we in the mess we are today. So uh, this is a project that's become really complicated because we've been working with the federal government. Um, it's been a lesson for me. I have no experience, which is probably good. And this is a good thing for this Riverway. We need their help, and it looks very positive on the help that we're going to get from them. We've been working with both with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the city of Salina has, as well as the Department of Transportation through the RAISE grant as well as local uh, sales tax dollars. I just have to figure out how to use this one for you. Um, this is some of what you used to have here. Um, it was a beautiful riverway and a really flowing river. If you go out on Indian Rock, you can actually look over the edge of the cliff and try not to slip over. But uh, it's a really beautiful riverway, and 60% uh, of everything you use comes from our river, as well as uh, the wells are recharged by water riverway, so we are completely dependent on this waterway and a lot of times when you're in a developed country you kind of forget that you are. So they used to have, this used to be the center of the community, most of our big parks were put right on the riverway and that was for a reason because that's where they had fun. They fished and they swam, they boated, they even had these uh, tour boats. Uh, as you can see on that bottom right hand corner, they can hold a lot of people. So in other words, it really had some water in it to flow both. So they had some boat houses, one by the Slana Journals, anyone remember that here? Oh good, so before I go any farther, because Ann Post will not be happy with me, we're looking for river stories. We're trying to create some river walks, historical river walks. And we're looking for not just exactly what building was here and that, but we'd like the human story, and it could be a happy story, it could be a sad story, it could be just an everyday story that you fished on the river. If you're a paper person, we have paper for you, and just send it right back to us. Or if you want to go online, it's on the Smoky Hill River Museum, we've been partnering with them, and you can just put it right up on there. So I know quite a few of you probably have some stories and we'd love to collect those because that's going to make those uh, historical walks way more interesting. <clears throat> All right, so the big, big reason uh, they settled here was there was lots of water. Salina <laughs> River is not far from us. It got, uh, hooks into the Smoky Hill about a mile or two outside of town. And because of that, though, when you're in a floodplain, that's exactly what happened. There's four big ones, and the last big one was well, actually, 93, but we had the levee system around us. Otherwise, we would have been underwater in Salina also. But the last one that really injured the community was 1951. And I just love the hospitality never faltered on this beer drinking group that, uh, you know, they just seem to enjoy whatever. And so beer was what you do, and water or not, they're going to have their beer. So uh, the other thing you can see, this is probably off the Iron Avenue Bridge, not exactly sure. But you can see this was a, a real waterway that flowed significant water and was beautiful. So this is sad, but this is what you have today. Um, it is uh, the reason that it happened after that big flood, the community they had it and destroyed a lot of housing and interfered with, you know, a flood is very destructive. And so the Corps of Engineers became involved um, the east side of your community, uh, where it's straight, is not natural. So if you go on the East Iron Avenue Bridge, you can look right off there and you see a straight riverway. That's not what prairie rivers do. They've had lots of problems because of that of erosion. And it's supposed to curve here, and that's also for all the birds that live on our waterways, the, the little babies aren't washed away. So there's, nature knows what it's doing. 
But that was blown, that hillside was blown out. It was done in about the early 60s. And I've heard stories from elders. One was Bob Exline, and he said that the city of Salina would not do or pay what they should have to make the original riverway be what it is. I tended to believe Mr. Exline because everyone wanted to say the Corps made mistakes and all that, but I do know, I'm a little Midwesterner, how conservative Midwesterners can be about spending money. It makes sense to me that maybe people thought it was too much money and didn't do what was appropriate, but the bad news is the cost of that was huge for our community. As you can see, we don't really, it's a destroyed ecosystem. As you can see on the map right here, over there, it's uh, seven miles from the river. You can see that's curving. When they did, a, there's been so many studies done on this riverway. There's, the reason it's curving, there's a whole layer of limestone underneath this where we're walking, and that's creating the curve. So I'm just nerd enough to remember stuff like that. So what happened then, by the 1970s, uh, they were already hiring Wilson Company to see can they uh, restore the riverway. So it wasn't because they wanted it to be diminished. Uh, it was diminished, and they were trying to figure out what do they do now. That took uh, <coughs> into the 1980s and 90s. It was one of the number one projects in the city when they would do strategic planning that they wanted the river back. This is not a new, this is not the friend's idea. This has been around for decades. So just so you know, they wanted the river back also, but. Uh, when you work in colleges like I did, you realize, oh, that's a really great idea, shelf. Those things happen a lot. This was shelved over and over again. And what I think is interesting about this story, it's really a human story. And a human story about not very many people. It only took six people, that's what the friends initially started with, to see if something could be done. It doesn't take 100, it doesn't take 50, it took six. And they started meeting with the city, and one of the first things they tried to get changed is, oh hello, they uh, tried to, um, it wasn't even called the Smoky Hill River, the old channel, they called it the drainage ditch, the sewer place, the city, when they go and talk to them, they never called it by its name. And a name is actually really important and it's significant. So the friends insisted that they start calling it the Smoky Hill River. So they called it the old Smoky Hill River channel. So when you go around town, you see those little brown signs, that's from the friends insisting that you call it its name and consider it a riverway. So there's a lot of just letting people rethink that maybe it could be a waterway. So what happened was a partnership with the city of Salina, which the Friends are still in partnership with the city, and I think of it as a really good example of cooperation. And you know in this time period we don't seem to do that very well. This is a real good example of people getting along no matter our political I know in our board we have major political differences, but we get along because we're, we're working toward one big project that matters to all of us. And so the city and the friends work together and the, um, the friends raised about 400,000 and they brought in a company from outside, uh, from uh, Colorado, and they did a study to see can it be salvaged, and that was one of the big questions. They didn't know if it's even possible. And the other big question is, the people side, does anyone care? So that was what the friends had to find out in their partnership with the city to see, does anyone care about this project? And are you willing to put forth your effort to save it? So the first thing they found out is that it wasn't horribly polluted. If that had happened, it would have been over. They found out that it was actually savable, that it could run water again. And two, they did all, I don't know if anyone remembers, all those things you put your stickers on. And the best one, they were all over town. I remember that's where I was like introduced to what was going on. And so by finding that, they found out too, people cared and would like to have a river again. So there was two things that were essential before the city put in about half a million for a master plan. A master plan is basically a vision for the future. And it contained some engineering in it. It's called preliminary engineering. They did a little engineering on it. And then they did a lot of visioning with people. And that's community. So they created steering committees, like what do you want on this riverway? What, what is possible? And so when that was all said and done, you had your original master plan. Well, everyone's super excited. And that can happen when you tend to stay with people that agree with you. And so the friends 
honestly made a mistake. They didn't have any marketing people on the board. And they thought their project was lovely, and which it is. They insisted that it go up for a sales tax increase vote by itself. This is from Jason Gage. I remember having a conversation with him. And what happened then is it was 2010. And of course, that's a, uh, I don't know if you remember, that was a huge downturn in our community, in our, uh, the housing was worth nothing, et cetera. It was a big downturn in the economic thing in the US. Well, they uh, were killed and did not pass. And I think this is also a story of tenacity and courage in spite of your outcomes. And so this probably would have, could have easily killed this project. But the really interesting news is about, there was a mentorship that was starting to happen from Denver, the uh, Greenway Foundation and Dana Crawford, who actually grew up in Salina, is, was a huge developer in downtown Denver, saved tons of historical buildings, told them don't give up, that this is worth fighting for. And I think their encouragement probably helped them stay in the game. Well, they knew they had one last chance, and um, truthfully, I think, I'm not sure why I took this job. <laughs> when I think back on that, it's pretty nutty. And, but the project was so uh, amazing idea of what could happen, that I just gave up the kind of cushy little job I had at Bethany and thought, what the heck, I'll be unemployed in six months, but I don't care. And that's really a true story. I thought we have one last chance for this to pass, and I just want to be part of it. So what happened then, we knew it had one more chance to go up for a sales tax. And the, this time it was done way more appropriately. It was mixed with other things. Streets, parks, um, balancing the slightest budget, so there's kind of a little bit of everything in there for everyone, and a very small piece of this was for the Smoke Hill River renewal. So we ran the grassroots effort called Yes for Better Salina, and it actually passed. No one thought we had a chance. And uh, Mike, you you were on the board then. There was fear on the board, like, oh my gosh, what do we do? I was like, no, we just do it, whatever it costs. You just did. This is your last chance. And so the most interesting thing about chances are that you just really need to step in and risk the thing of failure, which I'm personally terrified of failure, but this was <laughs> worth taking that chance on. And what's interesting about it, by that time we had about 50, maybe 100 people that helped us with this. So again, it didn't take 50,000 people. It takes a small group of dedicated people that want to see something really happen and help convince the middle group that yes, you want it, you should do this too. So when it passed, we were all very thrilled, and then we thought, oh, whoops, did I just take it out? Okay. Oh, uh, it was. Uh, it's 1.35 million. It's a 20-year tax. We get 16, but when it comes back to the, they've already put more money in. So when it, this is flowing, it's complicated. But it's around 27 million, somewhere around there. Your sales tax is what you have for this riverway, and I just want to thank you for that because without that, none of the rest of this would have happened. So you are the reason we are going to have this fabulous riverway because the tax showed people that we wanted a riverway. It's made all the difference. 27 million sounds like a whole lot of money until you look at Seven Miles of River and you realize, wow, that's really not going to make the most fabulous thing that we were hoping for. So we were always looking for um, more money and how can we do that? That's when we got involved with the Corps of Engineers. I had no idea they were as slow as they are, but that's probably good because then I really like forget. But it's good because we are still stepping through their processes and I personally believe we're going to get it, which will be, we'll get to that about $13 million. It's worth waiting, right? And we've asked this, uh, people, and they say you should wait, because that's a lot of money to just be like, man, we don't need it. So what's happened on this riverway with your dollars? Well, they did preliminary engineering for the riverway. And when I'm talking about the riverway, I'm not talking about the projects we thought we could do with $27 million. Martha Tasker did the whole riverway. The reason for that is because um, she knew there would be phase one, phase two, phase three in this. And also, by engineering the whole thing, all the pieces come together. Because this is not, you can't just go, so I know in the 80s they tried to dredge Oakdale Park, and how well did that work for you? About 10 minutes, right? Because this is all interconnected. This is not something you just go in and take out a piece and think you fixed it. 
it's all an interconnected waterway. So by engineering the whole thing, we have set the future of promise for future generations as well as ourselves. But by doing that, it took a lot more money and way more time. So that's part of the reason this has been slow, but it's also the reason we could get the raise grant. We'll get to that. Might take it too long. Okay. So this is your master plan, and I have some of these, and you can look at this. It is seven miles of riverway. And so what they did after they passed, we had the original master plan in 2010, but because that had been a long time, we passed it 16, they did a whole other steering committee upgrading the master plan. And the reason this is important, because when the first master plan was done, downtown, there wasn't even thought about downtown. Now, obviously, there's been a big change, right? So by updoing the master plan, the emphasis has actually turned into the downtown, which wouldn't have happened in phase one. Martha Tasker reminds me when I'm really frustrated, Jane, this is good that it's actually taken longer because we wouldn't have done the right river if we'd done it originally. And so I try to remember that when I'm like, this is taking a little long, but there are some things that happen with time that are good. So what is phase one? What does this actually mean for you? First of all, remember we talked about her doing preliminary engineering for the riverway. Well, we applied for a raise grant last year, and when I say we, the friends, was part of this, we put in 30000 and they put in 30000 And the reason for that is you have, to, uh, you have to have specialists. I'm a grant writer, but when you look at those federal grants, you're like, oh, no, I'm a baby, forget it. <laughs> it's just complicated. And by hiring specialists, you actually have a chance to maybe get it. But that didn't mean I wasn't part of the team and I got to write some of the narrative because they don't know the story. I know the story, the people's story, and also what happens in Salina. So that was a really interesting process. What I didn't know is that your first time around applying for a raise grant, almost nobody gets it. That's good to not know because he didn't mention that when we were working on this. And I also knew only about 10% that apply for this get it. So we were competing with a lot of other groups in Kansas, including the state of Kansas. So I knew that, but I, so you just have to put it down and know, we'll make, you know, we've got a good project. And so here's why you get something like this. She's done all the studies, all the preliminary engineering that everyone thinks is a waste of time. We had done years of uh, planning for what this is gonna be for the community. We use the, all the city people that have the information. We, we hired specialists that knew how to do it. The friends got to be involved. We were not excluded. We're the storytellers. We're the front people. And by doing that, we had a really beautiful grant. So after that was done, the head guy, the specialist goes, well, I'll just have to tell you this. If you don't have anyone helping you at the federal level, you're done. <laughs> well, that's nice to know now. So the good news is we've been in relationship with uh, the senators and representative for quite some time, and, and mainly Jerry Moran. And so we decided that we would do it ourselves and not hire a lobbyist to try to help us. And so he's been very responsive at his team and very interested in this project. And because we've been doing this for years with him, that also sets the tone as why he's interested in this project. So he did help us, and I do believe it wasn't one thing, it was all of those things while we got it our first time around. Now, you can only apply for $25 million if we, we got $22.1, that is really good. So what does that mean for this project? It means your sales tax dollars matter, because we've almost doubled it now just with this one. <coughs> so what, what does the rates grant mean? That's from the federal transportation uh, place. This is not the core. The core is part of the Army, so it's two different pots of money. So what does that mean for you? Transportation means it's about people. So when you think raise grant, think of people and movement. So it means new bridges. We have a lot of really aging bridges and actually bridges that really can't flow the river appropriately and also uh, it, you can never boat through a lot of these little culvert bridges. So what's going to happen? This is one of the best parts. The bridge, uh, the river goes, uh, Ohio goes over the river twice. And so it's not a walkable to get across with the trail system. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the thing about underpasses for people. So you'll have not only but brand new culvert on South Ohio running water because that bridge is ruined. You'll have a brand new pedestrian underpass because there'll be a brand new trail system 
that goes all around these seven miles. Some of it is using infrastructure that's already in place. But you'll also have um, connection. This will be right here, and it will connect into Indian Rock Park, and then, of course, the levee system, the trail system that's already in the community. So what this does is combining all of it into one big circle. So you, in the end, you'll have about 30 miles of trails in a round line that are safe and passable just because of these, one little, these little bridges. <clears throat> you'll have new bridges at Ash Street, Elm Street. Those were definitely too small. We've had to replace those bridges. We had to replace the bridge on South Ohio, no matter what. Now, some of these others are just added gratefully great, because what it does then is open up for boating a whole new way of transportation. You'll have a new bridge at Lakewood, and everyone goes, Lakewood, I don't even know what you're talking about. At one time, Lakewood was connected to the river. That bridge will be over where it's going to be reconnected to the riverway. So what that means then is you'll be able to go in and out of the lake into the river and back and forth. Does that make sense? Yeah. You'll have bridges on Midway, which is over by uh, the TPAC Center, and the YMCA has a bridge that you don't think about. It's a little tiny box bridge where um, it's not even possible that you could ever <laughs> do that. The one bridge that's going to be really special and has the most expense, remember we talked about master planning, upgrading the master plan? 100% the steering committee wanted as much money as possible spent around the downtown. So the bridge on Iron Avenue is what the community wants, so that will be the most expensive bridge, and it will have some of the inspiration of the Art Deco on it for that place. And so this is just some of that. There's also, this is not part of uh, the race ramp in 4th Street Plaza, which is on the corner of 4th and Iron. That will be a place for people to gather. Again, this is taking from the steering committee. They want the downtown to try to help it as much as possible. The plaza will be some of your sales tax dollars and actually will be fundraising by the Friends of the River Foundation. Because even with all these dollars, there's still not enough dollars to do all that's needed to make this as special as it should be. So this is uh, the 4th Street Plaza. You can see where the car museum is. They actually use this as their rendering because they didn't have much and they borrowed it. And back where you see dirt, that's where the plaza would be. It is not designed, but this is a staircase that will be going down to the riverway. Okay, so as we were talking before, there'll be a trail system. Now, trails are a million dollars a mile, so you can just follow your trails and out of your chairs. When I first heard that, I'm like, that cannot be possible. But if it's a concrete trail and used more as a roadway, like what we're trying to do, they're a million dollars a mile. They're close to that. So the one thing that I know is we don't have enough money for all that, so we are having some new trail and some infrastructure. For example, around the, this is what I think is going to happen, um, around TPAC, you know what I'm talking about, the old Bicentennial Center? Yeah, call it the Bicentennial Center. There's a, okay, there's a roadway there, and it's probably going to go down to one lane, and then half of that would be the trail, because this would cost $2 million just this piece, it would be close to that. And so what's going to happen in first phase, it won't be all new infrastructure, but there will be a trail system to get to the seven miles. So when I was talking trails, we, we have some new and some infrastructure. I do see this as generational. I think phase two, we'll be building more new trails because that's, I'm sure people will want that. Three questions, this is going too slow. Okay, uh, Corps of Engineers, remember we talked about those guys? And I have to be careful because Martha told me I can't be negative. <laughs> they do take their time, uh, one thing is for sure. It has moved into a new GI Bill because it went over the 10 million cap, but because of that, it's worth waiting for. Because what does, when you think of core, think of water. So remember we talked about transportation race, that's people. And the core is water or the environment. So what they bring is entrance works, which if you're, uh, and sediment removal, the biggest problem in your riverway is the prairie, our banks are made of dirt. We have beautiful dirt here. I come from farming. And by doing that, when you uncover the prairie with agriculture, you've brought in a lot of silt. However, it would have had some in there anyway. So when the river became uh, slower moving, it dumped out the silt that was in, running in the riverway. So when 
when you think of South Ohio Bridge, you cannot see the culvert. It's completely full of dirt. That's one of the worst areas. Out by Indian Rock Park, if you look at what used to be the river, you're like, that cannot be, because it's almost completely silt in it. In places, there's about eight feet of silt. That's how bad some of it is. But, so, that's part of the issues. So, you know, entrance, what, how do they take care of that? They have a weir out by Indian Rock where it's gonna turn back in and it pulls the cleanest water in. So you're bringing in the top of the river, not the bottom. <coughs> and then you're gonna have two like ponds, they're called sediment basins, and that will dump out, so it slows the water down, it's gonna sit a little, and it dumps out any silt, and then it moves on into a water marsh that pulls out phosphates, which all of this will be great fishing, great bird watching that too, because what I've learned about this, everything that's meant for the riverway is actually good for the environment and humans. So what they do, a riverway is not a ditch. A riverway is deep pools, that's where your fish live, and, and riffles, shallows. With the core, that's what we get. If the city has to do this, it'll probably be a ditch because it'll be less expensive. So you see why we're waiting on the core, because guess what the core brings us? A living riverway that you can fish on. And I think, personally, that's really important, as well as everyone we've surveyed says the same thing. So this is the one core, John. Um, this is, um, there, do you, does everyone remember where the old dam is by the community theater? Yeah. Do you remember that? Well, that dam's been around a long time. It's ready to collapse. And one of the questions for the, the people that um, were voting in on this was, do you want to have a historical dam or do you want to have it where votes can do it? 100%. This is including all the elders. We're like, we want to build the river. I'm like, whoa. I was never so surprised in all my life. So the dam is going away because it's ready to collapse anyway. It's a fish ferry because fish swim upstream. And so it's going to make it a way, way better riverway. And so instead of that, around there, you're going to have five little mini waterfalls that go all the way around the community theater. And so there'll be these things called boat shoots. So you'll have the sound of running water right by your downtown and boat shoots. Now, this whole seven miles is only about a 14 to 15 foot drop. So you can see what Martha says, you have to do this well, it's all interconnected, and this could go wrong really quick. This is not a big drop of this river, so it makes it more complicated to make sure you're running, you're developing it right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is showing a trail that will connect over to the community theater with a new pedestrian bridge, and this is showing your canoe slides, just examples. So Lakewood Park, this is one of my favorites, is connecting the lake back to the river. So what, that, what does that actually mean? It means that um, this is going to be water marshes, and they call them boat trails. Not only is it crazy great for the environment, but it's also going to be super fun. And then this lake will get about six feet deeper. It'll make it a way better fishing lake. As well as, remember we talked about dirt, we got a whole bunch of it. This whole of the lake will be filled with silt, and then that will become a hillside and become a new trail system. So you're gonna have a hill at the Lakewood that's not there now that will be, this will be the last thing finished, obviously, because you're gonna be digging silt for a while. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Be kind of like this, what you're floating through on the So, as we said, we have all these dollars that we're trying for. I do feel very positive about the core. I do think we have a really strong chance to get the core dollars, especially Jerry Moran is really helping with that, with that also. You say you should tell him thank you. Um, there's still not enough dollars for what we think people really desire for. So the Friends has pledged to raise about 4.5 million. Um, we've raised about 400,000 at this point. And that'll be for amenities along the river that, that is not able to be done. And a lot of that, we're hoping, will be around the plaza, I'm pretty sure, even though we're still kind of waiting for everything to fall out. I think we'd probably be raising, fundraising for some other things, too, that we're not quite sure what that is yet. So, what, what has happened? Is there anything that I get to see? Well, yes, we have a half-mile trail. We are um, developing, oh, this is showing me. Oh. Uh, October 28th, we had the ribbon cutting for um, 
the new trail. And the reason we're building a piece of the trail right now is for example exactly what, what in the world is happening here. And so they they knew that we could build the trail in this area without disturbing later when they go into construction. So this first half mile around the Y is finished. You can go use it. It's a public trail. And also uh, we hope to have um, this is showing some of the trail you can see is 10 foot by concrete trail, so it's multi-use. You can ride a bike, you can, mm -hmm. and they've made it deep enough that you can, um, they can pull in equipment on it without destroying it. So there's a couple reasons to do concrete. One, the parks have never could have enough employees to be fixing trails, so this is just about sustainability. As you can see on the side, uh, there is prairie grasses planted there. That's on purpose. One, this is supposed to be a, a wild area on the trail. And it's great for the prairie uh, pollinators and the animals along the riverway. And another thing, there's no watering going on here. So it has to be self-sustaining. This is about people. Uh, so the prairie will take around three years to really get established. We ask for your patience. It might look a little scraggly for a while. And also, what that also means, they only have to mow it maybe once or twice a year. So you can see that's about sustainability. It's about what's great for the place. It's also about telling the story that our prairie is actually beautiful and to let people know we should be proud of the place. And the prairie is letting people be in it is really important for that. So that's it. Ah, well, that went long. Sorry, I tried mm -hmm. to get through that. Um, awesome. Oh, well, thank you. Okay, dates. That's the big question. So when is it really going to happen? Honestly, we put a first person trail in, in this winter. I'm hoping the next piece that goes to South Ohio to connect to that trail will be almost a mile. Hopefully that will be bid out this winter. It, we, the reason it was slow is just easements. So we have the money and all of that. We just waited for easements. So I think all that's pretty well finished. So hopefully that will go in construction sometime next year. Then what happens for two years after the raise grant uh, gets signed, it's taken over a year just to sign a contract with the federal government. The raise grant is considered really fast. So that's, it's just difficult. So she thinks, I'm talking about Martha Tasker, that she's all but really close to signing the contract with the feds. So once that happens, it will go into, remember we talked about engineering of this riverway? So it's going to go into final designs. So that's what it's called. It will take two years and it will take 10 engineer designers to finish it. That's how many projects are happening on this and that's the extent of how long they'll take. So from 24 to 26 they finish those and then the whole project, I'm talking about all of it, I'm talking about raised dollars, will go out for bid in 26. So from 27 to 30, 31, <coughs> there will be major construction projects on the riverway. During this time the Corps has to make up their mind, that's, they're in the timeline, yes or no, or whatever is going to happen there. And so their construction overseeing would happen during that time period also. It has to be finished by 2031, I can't remember what month, uh, for the raised dollars or else you lose it. So I like that because it forces it to happen. So I know Martha's hoping it would be 2030, but honestly I have to say 2031 because, you know, construction is never quite goes exactly, and weather has a huge impact on this. So what will be built first, I'm sure, will be bridges, because they like to build bridges when it's dry. It's way less expensive than with water around. Does that make sense? But at this point, I don't know when or what, because it hasn't been bid out. So we don't know what bridges go first. We don't know any of that. I don't know when the plaza, I have no idea. In that period, we don't know that yet. So does that make sense? It's a big project. I would just like to say thank you for your patience and also for hopefully you voted yes. If you didn't vote yet, you just don't have to tell me that. <laughs> for the sales tax dollars that have meant so much to this community. I will tell you that it's already being used to recruit young people to this community because I've, I've met them. And I just had um, whoever's overseeing the downtown, I try to be really private on this. Um, some of the downtown renovations, they're trying to recruit some businesses. They call and ask for all kinds of information about the river. It's being used to try to recruit businesses to downtown. So just so you know, even though it doesn't seem like a lot's happening, it's already percolating and doing exactly 
what it was meant to do. It's meant to be a great place for you to have fun. But the other things are just as important. Economic renewal of the oldest parts of our community, I think will absolutely be what happens to some of our oldest neighborhoods. As well as I think it really helps tie a bow for the downtown to be successful long term. And it brings people into that area because we know it's going to be boatable with the raise grant. We know there will be a trail system and we know it waters something that draws people. <coughs> I'm hoping that somebody would open a restaurant on the riverway. That's my hope. But of course that's not our, that's not what we do. That's private development. But spread the word. Hopefully someone will want to do that. I think it could be really great to have a cool restaurant with a deck on the back that could sit and watch the river and people go by. That would be awesome. So those are all private developers, but I've already heard people chattering about some of that. There's someone I know that's buying houses, redoing them close to the river because he thinks it's going to be a good deal and uh, I just know him. So that's been interesting to see that it's already stirring the water. The thing that I um, the reason I took this job, the number one reason, I've worked in small colleges most of my life. And to draw young people into a community is not that easy. But the one thing for sure I know does is this riverway. The one thing when we did surveying, trails were always the number one thing people wanted. And this is the most interesting part of that story. The Slide Parks and Rec did a master plan a few years ago. And you know, they do all kinds of programming recreation, sports, hey, those are all really great and important, but the number one wish of your community, can you imagine what that was? Trails. Thank you, trails. <laughs> I blew me away, but what it meant, we were right on target with what we should be doing. People want trails. It's all across the country. It's, it's what people want to do. So whenever I am in front of young people, I just say 30 miles of trail, they're in. I don't, I don't have to sell this at all. It's not a sales job. It's just letting them hear it and they're in. I've never met a young person yet that doesn't love the idea of this. So where's the 30? I mean, that's What's seven that? miles there. You're talking about 30 miles of trail. So where? It's all the trails around Salina on the levee system. All their trails connected together with this new trail system will be around 30 miles. So that's, that's what you'll, and that's a calling card for a community. Because young people, um, the end of my career at colleges, the idea that boomers is just about jobs, that has been gone a long, long time. Don't make that mistake. Young people look for quality of life first, mm -hmm. job second. Mm -hmm. And just look up any stats. I know I'm right. And all I have to do is talk to a young person group, it's always the same. It's just who they are. They don't care <coughs> as much about, they want to have a great life. What's, what's projected date or maybe green date to have all that thing. Yeah, 2030, 31. All of that? Yes. I heard Phase you one. Say that, but yes. I didn't realize uh -huh. you could have all of that. Yes. Uh -huh. It has to. Long. No. The I construction, I always thought construction would be really long. Construction is a dream compared to what we've been through. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this part is the hard part. It's the long, the planning, getting everyone in, and blah, 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 blah. That's the hard part. Yeah. I, I heard that, that I couldn't. Yeah, it's absolutely it true. Yeah. Done. Yeah. It has to. We don't have a choice. Right. Well, we so it'll be, multiple, it'll be multiple. It'll be, it might be a one, I don't know how this will be, but <coughs> one big, huge deal that's outsourcing. That's what's going to happen. Hopefully, as local as possible. The reason cement slabs were picked for bridges is because Kansas does that very well. That, that's all been planned and thought out. So that hopefully Kansas contractors get those those bridges. Doesn't mean they will, it just hopefully a lot of it goes. The trail was done by Pont Construction, the local uh, mm -hmm. dollars being spent. It doesn't mean all of it will, but hopefully, uh, or hoping some of it. So, are there questions? Yeah. Has a friend been in conversation with the city in terms of taking on a role of maintaining this project once it's completed. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, look at the time. <laughs> no. Actually, I've been meeting with the parks already to strategize on what is it that it's going to take to maintain this. So I am working on trying to get that conversation started. 
because I think we're going to wait too long. We already have a trail in existence. They don't have enough employees. We know it's a problem. So yes, we are going to be taking the lead on that. And I'm going to start bringing that forward. I've already brought it forward in front of Martha. And we need to start moving that direction on what's it going to take people-wise to actually take care of this big boy project. That's just as important as building it. The maintenance of it is really critical for it to be successful. The one thing I will let you know, you should be very proud of your local citizens. What they've done, we've had an aesthetic committee, which where's art going to go, where's plants, and some of that was done with the original steering committee, and it was finished out. The one thing that's been part of the conversation is how do we do this with as low as maintenance as possible. Obviously, we just talked about the bike trail, right? Mm -hmm. That was well thought out. We don't want we don't want that other kind of grass, and we want it to be self-sustainable. We want it to be a place, honestly, that's what's supposed to be here, but also takes very little manpower when it really gets established. So those things have really been thought out. Now around downtown, that'll be more whatever you want to call it, urban-y and probably have a few pots. Uh, we've mixed a lot of potted plants because there's nobody to take care of them. Mm -hmm. The only place I see potted plants is probably around the downtown. That, that is things that citizens have said over and over again. And I remind the city, like, right, we're not planting another kind of grass. I did have to be the reminder, remember, Dan, it's supposed to be prairie grasses. Luckily, we have a specialist in town, uh, Lakewood Discovery Center. Brian is the, he's a specialist in prairie grasses because they've been growing prairie grasses in Lakewood and Indian Rock, and he's the one that oversees that. So he advised them where to get the, how do you do this, blah, blah, blah. So we do have people we can ask and do. That's not the friend's job. I do I do see myself more and more as I'm the, hey, remember, I'm the person that gets to do that. But we're the ones that really have the river at our heart. Like Martha Tasker, she's been doing a, upgrades in a sewer plant. She's got the thing at, out at the, you know, the, what do you call that out at the airport authority, the plume. She's got, she's had so many things on her plate. <coughs> Not that she hasn't done a great job, but this is our focus. We will always be the ones reminding the city to remember this is important. So the Friends should be here for generations. Someone said, is the Friends about done? No, it's just getting started. We're just getting started with care and, and oversight of this beautiful project. Wow, I answered all the questions. Did that answer some questions? Yes. With regard to his comment about yeah. maintenance, I would think it would be important to convince the people living close to the water to focus on trash collection. Um, actually, thank you very much. Now, most of the trash is in the waterway has floated in, so it's not really, they're not the ones throwing it in, although there has been some homeless sites that have thrown it in. So, one of them's right by Walnut Bridge, there's been some homeless in there, and it's really bad. Mm -hmm. But most of it floats in. So all those people that think, hey, just one bottle, pitch it out the window of the car, and there's a lot of you doing that, not that any of you would do that. <laughs> um, it goes directly when it rains, directly. It doesn't go through your sewer system. Rainwater goes directly in rivers, that's true across the world. Whatever you put on your streets is gonna end up in your waterway. Remember, where does your drinking water come from? River. Thank you. So anyone doing that is you're polluting your own water. Well. So we can pull up three bags of trash. It was a huge storm drain that could be five miles away at the Y. And in a morning we can pull up forty bags. And mostly it's water, which is really ironic, water bottles and fast food stuff. That's mostly what we're pulling out. I believe that people, once they understand that, will um, have changed. Again, the friends will be part of that story and trying to help people understand what they're doing to themselves. <coughs> And once people understand it's their own water, drinking water, uh, I've had some college students always got sick when they really thought that out. That just has bothered them. But maybe it creates change, which I know it has created some change. It's a slow process. There will be some trash collecting, trying to pick it up before it gets in the river, as well as I think there'll be some many things to try to catch it before it gets in. This is a problem across the world. This is why your oceans are filled with trash and your rivers. It's floating in, it's not blowing in, and I don't think the neighbors, maybe some of them are, are throwing the bottles in. I know a, I'm sorry. I know a fellow who is regularly picking up trash and he's got a group of kids. Yeah, yeah I've heard about that, that's awesome. Our friend said, Hopefully they'll join us on the rivers. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know. 
We're it. Places. We're it. The friends, we're it. The parks do not have the people to pick up trash in the riverways. We are the people doing that. So we have, we play a real important role. With that, I'm talking volunteers. So mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, we need to talk about Yeah, that'd be great. Yes. This, this, I'm just thinking about um, during the construction phase, that Iron Street Bridge. Yes. Can they do that like half of the bridge no, the time? I don't think so. Well, I don't know anything about bridges. I'm talking out of line. I don't know. I do think the Ohio bridges, they'll do half and half because those are box. They're bringing new culverts. So that's different than a cement slab bridge. So probably half the road will be open. I'm sorry, everyone's going to be mad and I'm sure I'm going to get phone calls. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I really don't know that because I don't know enough about it, but I can't imagine that it, I think it will be shut down. And it doesn't go under the railroad or anything? It just goes up near where the railroad is? The railroad people are a whole generation. Yeah. They do what they wish to do, and mm -hmm. we're shifting the river six feet east to get away from the oh. railroads. He told me that's easier to move the river than deal with railroads. <laughs> <laughs> and that's from the engineer. That, and I know from working wow. with Westland, I would have to totally agree with that. That is absolutely. So they're just shifting it slightly over uh -huh. some. So that's how they're taking care of some of those issues. The railroad is, is a life into itself, and we have no say so on that. They are building a new wall. This is part of the race grant at Oakdale Park, you know where the uh, water plant is? Well, that wall where the railroad tracks on is ready to collapse. So um, that'll be a new wall there to, for safety and hopefully maybe a mural or something. We'll see. Is the railroad building that? No, that's from the race grant. Yeah. No, they just let things fall to pieces, that's what I've heard. Right. Yeah. Well, that's like yeah. the rest of 4th Street in front of the, the yard and the mm -hmm. garage and all that. Yeah. And, and your office. Yeah. Yeah, they're not quick to move. Yeah. yeah. I just know from working at Wes and I learned a lot about, they were trying to, <laughs> they were trying to work with the railroad. That took years to get what they did over there. That, that was years processes. So they have a lot of power. You know, they, you know, their transportation and that's a big thing, so. Okay. Are you excited about the riverway? Yeah. <laughs> good, you are. So, good. Thank you. I do have for Martha, if you want to know money costs, I actually have that. If you're interested in what bridges cost, she's got it laid out. If you want to see it, we try to be very transparent. So, we actually have those close numbers. So, if you're interested in that, I'd have that up here. As well as your river stories. So. one of those forms about the memories of the river because I think my husband will have some stories. Can <laughs> <laughs> you say it's on the website? It's on the website. There's a, you can do it online. You can do it online through the Smoke Hill uh, River Museum. I mean, the Smoke Hill Museum, not us. It's on the museum oh, site for parking with them. Their website's 10 times better than ours. We're going to have a new one, but it's. Well, I just want to thank everybody for coming and thank you Jane for coming and being our speaker and getting us up to date on what's going on with the river project because it is exciting. And our next Lunch and Learn will be in January on the 9th and Jamie Doss, our Saline County Clerk, will be our speaker and she's going to be talking about the, uh, the election on March the 19th which is the presidential preferential primary. And I say that and most people are like, I don't know what that is. That's so all it is. She is going to explain it once she gets all her information. So she is going to get us all up to date on what exactly that is. and um, What's the date? March the 19th. Right, but oh, the lunch and learn is January the 9th. Okay. At 12.15 here. 